Let's talk about Amazon Aurora because the exam is starting to ask you a lot of questions about it. Now, you don't need deep knowledge on it, but you need enough high-level overview to understand exactly how it works. So this is what I'm going to give you in this lecture. Aurora is going to be a proprietary technology from AWS. It's not open sourced, but they made it so it's going to be compatible with Postgres and MySQL. And basically your Aurora database will have compatible drivers. That means that if you connect as if you were connecting to a Postgres or a MySQL database, then it will work. Aurora is very special and I won't go too deep into the internals, but they made it cloud optimized and by doing a lot of optimization and smart stuff, basically they get 5x performance improvements over MySQL on RDS or 3x the performance of Postgres on RDS. Not just that, but in many different ways, they also get more performance improvements. To me, I've watched it, it's really, really smart, but I won't go into the details of it. Now, Aurora storage automatically grows, and I think this is one of the main features that is quite awesome. You start at 10 gigabytes, but as you ask, as you put more data into your database, it grows automatically up to 64 terabytes. Again, this has to do with how to design it, but the awesome thing is that now as a DB, uh, as a DB or a SysOps, you don't need to worry about monitoring your disk. You just know it will grow automatically with time. Also for the read replicas, you can have up to 15 replicas while well, MySQL only has five and the replication faster, the way they made it, it's much faster. So overall, it's a win. Now, if you do failover in Aurora, it was going to be instantaneous. So it's going to be much faster than a failover from multi-AZ on MySQL or RDS. And because it's cloud native, by default, you get high, uh, high availability. Now, although the cost is a little bit more than RDS, about 20% more, it is so more if, so much more efficient that at scale, it makes a lot more sense for savings. So let's talk about the aspects that are super important, which is high availability and read scaling. So Aurora is special because it's going to store six copies of your data anytime you write anything across three AZ. And so Aurora is made such as it's available, so it only needs four copies out of six for write. So that means that if one AZ is down, you're fine and it only needs to have three copy out of six needed for reads. So again, that means that it's highly available for reads. There is some kind of cell filling process that happens, which is quite cool, which is that if some data is corrupted or, or bad, then it does cell filling with peer-to-peer -peer replication in the backend, and it's quite cool. And you don't rely on just one volume, you rely on hundreds of volumes. Again, not something for you to manage. It happens in the back end, but that means that you just reduce the risk by so much. So if you look at it from a diagram perspective, you have three AZ and you have a shared storage volume, but it's a logical volume. And it has replication, self-healing and auto expanding, which is a lot of features. So if you were to write some data, maybe blue data, you'll see the six copy of it in three different AZ. Then if you write some orange data, again, six copy of it in different AZ. And then as you write more and more data, it's basically going to go again, six copy of it in three different AZ. The cool thing is that it goes on different volumes and it's striped and it works really, really well. Now we need to know about storage and that, that's it. But you don't actually interface with the storage. It's just a design that Amazon made and I want to give it to you as well so you understand what Aurora uh, takes. Now Aurora, it's like multi-AZ for RDS. Basically, there's only one instance that takes writes. So there is a master in Aurora, and that's where we'll take writes. And then if the master uh, doesn't work, the failover will happen in less than 30 seconds on average. So it's really, really quick failover. And on top of the master, you can have up to 15 read replicas, all serving reads. So you can have a lot of them. And this is how you scale your read workload. And so any of these read replicas can become the master in case the master fails. So it's quite different from our, how RDS works, but by default, you only have one master. The cool thing about these read replicas is that it supports cross region replication. So if you look at Aurora on the right hand side of the diagram, this is what you should remember. One master, multiple read replicas, and the storage is going to be replicated, self healing, auto expanding, little blocks by little blocks. Now let's have a look at how Aurora is as a cluster. So this is more around how Aurora works when you have clients, how do you interface with all these instances? So as we said, we have a shared storage volume and it's auto expanding from 10 gigabytes to 64 terabytes, really cool feature. Your master is the only thing that will write to your storage. And because the master can change and fail over, what Aurora provides you is what's called a writer endpoint. So it's a DNS name, a writer endpoint, and it's always pointing to the master. So even if the master fails over, your client still talks to the writer endpoint and is automatically redirected to the right instance. Now, as I said before, you also have a lot of read replicas. What I didn't say is that they can have auto scaling on top of these read replicas. So you can have one up to 15 read replicas and you can set up auto scaling such as you always have the right number of read replicas. 
Now, because you have auto scaling, it can be really, really hard for your applications to keep track of where are your replicas, what's the URL, how do I connect to them? So for it, you have to remember this absolutely for going for the exam. There is something called a reader endpoint. And a reader endpoint has the exact same feature as a writer endpoint. It helps with connection load balancing and it connects automatically to all the read replicas. So anytime the client connects to the reader endpoint, it will get connected to one of the read replicas and there will be load balancing done this way. Make sure, uh, just notice that the, uh, the load balancing happens at the connection level, not the statement level. So this is how it works for Aura. Remember, writer endpoint, reader endpoint. Remember, auto scaling. Remember, shared storage volume that auto expands. Remember this diagram because once you get it, you'll understand how Aura works. Now, if we go deep into the feature, you get a lot of things I already told you. Automatic failover, backup and recovery, isolation and security, industry compliance, push button scaling by auto scaling. Um, automated patching with zero downtime, so it's kind of cool dark magic they do in the back end. Uh, advanced monitoring, routine maintenance, so all these things are handled for you. And you also get this feature called Backtrack, which is giving you the ability to restore data at any point of time. And it actually doesn't use rely on backups, it relies on something different. But you can always say, I want to go back to yesterday at 4 p.m. And you say, oh, no, actually, I wanted to, yes to do yesterday at 5 p.m. And it will work as well, which is super, super neat. For security, it's very similar to how RDS works. You get encryption at rest using KMS. You get automated backups, snapshots, and replicas, and all of these will be encrypted. Um, encryption in flight using SSL, so it will be the exact same process as MySQL and Postgres. So for MySQL, it will be a SQL statement to enforce SSL, whereas for Postgres, it would be the parameter group you have to use. You can authenticate to Aurora using IAM, which is super neat, and you're responsible for protecting the instance with security groups. Finally, just like for RDS, you cannot SSH, so there's stuff you still can't do. And on top of it, finally, there is something called Aurora Serverless, which is in that case, you don't need to issue an instance size at all. It's just auto scales for you. It only supports for now MySQL 5.6 as of January 2019 and Postgres, uh, which is still in beta. And it's helpful basically when you can't predict your workload. So when you can't know how it will scale or if you get a huge workload peak. And so the DB cluster will start, shut down and scale automatically based on how many CPU or connections there are available on your Aurora instance. And the cool thing is that you can migrate from a cluster to serverless and vice versa. So you can choose basically based on the time of the year what you prefer having. And you, when you have Aurora serverless scaling, you have ACU, it's called Aurora Capacity Units. So it looks a lot like what happens for DynamoDB. So you just have capacity units and basically the capacity units will increase and decrease as the load increases or decreases. And you're going to get build in five minutes increments of using an ACU. Now, some features of Aurora serverless are not supported um, versus just Aurora itself. So if you plan on using serverless, just look at the documentation to make sure you know exactly what you're missing on. So that's it for Aurora. I hope that makes sense for you and I will see you in the next lecture.